Good afternoon, Chaos. This is Hecalitos, your friendly Legion's leader here. I'm set to do another review of one of our Legion's brothers. This of Prof. Rook Frink, who has been in Legion's for a while and just asked for a little bit of help um, looking over which would be a better Jedi or Sith and Arena for him or her, and just some general advice on where to take your roster. Now, I looked over it, and it's pretty good. Now, I must admit, I did not look at the ship arena, because you've got some really great things going in your um, roster to begin with, and I just didn't take the time to look at the ship arena, because it didn't. it's not something you mentioned. But though, at the end, I can kind of glance over them and kind of see what you've got, and maybe make some quick recommendations without too much research. But uh, I notice you are running a Zeta Qui-Gon Jinn lead in Arena with a Jedi Knight Anakin and Ezra Bridger, Grandmaster Yoda, and R2-D2, which is a very, very strong Arena team right now. So, um, well, let's, look at you, let's look at the rest of what you got before I make any more recommendations, or any recommendations. So, looking at your roster here, you have about 57 star characters. And about 20 total characters that are gear 11. So, we've got a good start. And another thing I noticed when looking at your roster is you have a lot of characters that are just unlocked at level 1 with no gear. Which means you are very good at focusing your efforts. However, some of these level 1 low star just unlocked characters are extremely powerful and you could benefit from leveling a few of them up and I'll go into that in detail in a little bit. But you ask first, have a look at your arena team and you've got pretty much all Jedi and like I said when I first looked at it, it is a very very strong arena team and I think you said you could hit into the top 30. Um, and the only way you could really make your arena team better is with General Kenobi, who I see you have not unlocked yet. Um, I'm not sure how close you are, but just stick in Legions. We do plenty of heroic tanks. You'll get him in no time. And then once you get him, even at 5 star, he is phenomenal. And you'll probably want to throw General Kenobi in for Grandmaster Yoda. Yoda's foresight is awesome, and his tenacity buff is great. But um, for anybody to hold rank, you pretty much have to have General Kenobi. So Yoda is the best one to take out and throw in General Kenobi. So your goal for your Jedi team is Qui-Gon Jinn lead. A Jedi Anakin, Ezra Bridger, General Kenobi, and R2-D2. Um, and after I looked at your Sith, I would strongly recommend just sticking with the Jedi. The, you have some strong Sith in Darth Maul, Darth Vader, Darth Sidious, Emperor Palpatine, Count Dooku, Sith Assassin. But really, the strength of any Sith team rests on two characters. And that's Darth Nihilus and Savage Opress. I have... Don't think I've ever seen a strong Sith team that doesn't include both of those with Savage and a Zeta. So, I wouldn't recommend switching to Sith right now. I would stick with your Jedi. And with those Jedi, let's take a look at your mods real quick. And... Under Qui-Gon Jinn, Jedi are made and designed to be super fast. okay? Which is why a lot of the common Jedi... Well, let me rephrase that. A lot of the Jedi you can unlock quickly are not in this group. But with his agility training, adding 30 speed to every Jedi, and converting that speed into offense, basically tells... As the developers telling players, make your Jedi as fast as possible. So, in addition to getting the best 
secondary speed mods you can um, you really really want a speed arrow on Qui-Gon Jinn and I'd recommend taking the one off of Darth Sidious and putting it here and Qui-Gon Jinn also could benefit from crit chance so his triangle I would recommend something with crit chance and speed as a secondary which you have also on Darth Sidious and for a cross you want to have potency for Qui-Gon Jinn because of his quick strike his quick, tri his quick strike is a turn meter reducer so the more potency you have the more likely he is to reduce the damage I'm oh, sorry reduce the turn meter of any character that he hits with his basic and um, that's definitely going to help and it makes your Jedi seem even faster than they are so the potency mod I found that would be most useful to him is one you actually have on Grand Admiral Thrawn right now so your arrow and triangle mods I'd recommend taking them off of Sidious and putting them on Qui-Gon Jinn and your cross taking it off Grand Admiral Thrawn and putting it on Qui-Gon as well um, Jedi Knight Anakin uh, you've got some good stuff here I notice he's got a speed arrow which is good um, for his triangle you're gonna want a crit chance triangle again as well because of two reasons one well they're both part of his reckless assault you want him to crit because that will give offense up to everybody but also if he doesn't crit he gains a exposed debuff which means the next time he gets hit it automatically takes out 25% of his total health so crit is super important to Jedi and Anakin and for a long time it has been recommended a mod setup very similar to what you have two potency mods two crit chance mods and two health mods because he is an attacker he's kinda squishy I would argue that your two health mod two health sets here you would probably want to move them to a crit chance set because you have R2-D2's number crunch zated so that adds a lot of health and protection to Anakin to help him survive so using that survivability you can add more crit to him and make him do more damage less expose which is why the crit chance the um a triangle with a crit chance primary is your best bet because you're gonna roll on that crit you don't need the protection of the health with R2-D2's number crunch and I believe your princess Leia has a nice crit chance triangle to put on Jedi and Anakin um, potency cross now this mod the primary stat you're gonna to want to be potency as well and I believe you have a potency set cross with a potency primary on either one of your Ewoks or Grand Moff Tarkin um, both of them have a potency cross on them but I don't remember which one's a potency set but you're definitely gonna to want to take both of those off and put whichever one here completes your set bonus because his basic can inflict healing and buff immunity which is a really big deal so you want to get his potency up to make that stick and hopefully it goes without saying you want to get as much speed secondaries as you can speed secondaries offense secondaries and crit chance secondaries because Anakin will be a beast if you get him enough offensive stats um, next you had Ezra Bridger who is modded pretty well you have one health set and two crit chance sets probably to help him survive which is good and then you have a speed arrow which is great crit damage triangle great choice and a protection um, cross which is not bad he doesn't necessarily need potency and with Yoda doesn't need tenacity so you're good really with any kind of mod 
in that spot right there. As long as you are giving him offense, speed, and crit chance secondaries. You're going to want to find, for Ezra, you want those three stats to be three of the four secondary stats. Speed, offense, crit chance. Aside from that, not a big deal. Potency, he does not need potency at all. So if you have potency, just get rid of it. Or at least don't put it on Ezra. But health, protection, um, those can be useful. Defense, meh. They're all really just defensive stats that he doesn't need. Um, so ideally, you want an offense number and offense percentage, but that's really hard to find all four of those stats. So whichever ones you can get. Grandmaster Yoda. Now, you may or may not want to spend too much of your resources on him because he is the one I'd recommend to take out. However, if you do keep him in, which... Ever potency cross you don't use on Janina Anakin, remember from your Ewok or Grand Moff Tarkin, put on here because his unstoppable force stuns and removes turn meter. So that's where he could really use the tenacity. I'm sorry, the potency. Um, none of none of the other abilities he has affects anybody else. And he's his purpose is not necessarily to do damage but that but he's there to, to steal buffs and spread buffs so you're gonna want more than your other characters speed on Grandmaster Yoda because you want him to constantly have foresight and to constantly be spreading that foresight around battle meditation if you think you're gonna keep him for a while then go ahead and put a Zeta upgrade on his battle meditation because that will make it spread foresight as well as tenacity up. But I wouldn't necessarily I wouldn't spend too much um, finding this of the right mods for Yoda because, like I said, you will be replacing him soon. And the last in your lineup, R two D two. I like I mentioned, you have a Zeta number crunch, which is awesome. I love it. Uh, so that gives R two a lot. Of freedom in what mods he needs. Um, it's always nice to have an R2D2 being super fast, especially if you don't have General Kenobi. That way he can use smoke screen and do what we call a ghetto taunt. He'll taunt, he won't taunt, he'll stealth everybody but one character, and so you're in effect giving that one character taunt. Now, aside from that, he is going to need potency because his basic electroshock prod 80% chance to stun that's great and you want him to stun people so potency is good and his improvise which inflicts burning that attack can't be evaded but I don't know if the burning can't be resisted so that would require a little more research on my part but, at the very least, you want Potency to up his Electroshock prod, the chance of sticking the stun. So, that means his cross, you're going to want Potency. And I noticed you have a fantastic Potency mod on Darth Vader that has lots of speed. So, you'd probably want to throw it on R2-D2. And, because R2-D2 is not an attacker... He's there as pretty much a stat bot and a buffer, so really a support character. Critical damage is not super important on him. You want health, protection, or offense. Because those three stats, he will push on and help out his teammates. Um, protection would give you the most benefit, being like 23.5% of what he already has. So that might be the best idea. But a health and offense primary would work great as well. Um, I personally like the two health sets you have. But again, because he's not there to do damage, you might find a better place um, for those two crit chance, or that crit, cha crit chance set you have. So we might want to switch that out for a potency set, uh, if that's what Darth Vader's cross has, or a health set. 
or something else that he can buff the rest of your team with. So that's your Jedi team, which, like I said, is great. And it's a very, very strong contender. And once you throw General Kenobi in there, can hit the top and stay in the top 10 with good mods. So keep up, keep working on them. And outside of your arena team, uh, you really want to start getting able to farm speed mods. And you're pretty set to go for speed mods if you just leveled up your Finn and Ray a little bit. 75, 80. And um, get Ray up to gear 8. But Poe, Resistance Pilot, Finn, and Ray at level 85, gear 8 with an R2D2, you could easily 3 star that challenge for speed mods. Um. And you also do not have offense mods unlocked, which requires a first order team. Um, so I'd recommend maybe getting these guys up to the level 75, 80 range. Um, you will need them all five stars to max the offense mod challenge. And leads me into my first recommendation to up your roster and that's a character I know is super popular I'm not a huge fan of him but I know he's very popular for everybody else and that's Kylo Ren uh, you will need him at 5 star to, to max out that offense challenge and so that's probably where you want to spend the bulk of your cantina energy until you get him to 5 star and then once he's at 5 star or 1 or 2 days a week just straight mods whichever type of mod you want just farm a whole bunch of them because it takes a long time to get the mod you need um, now if you're gonna be spending all that cantina energy um, you're gonna be getting a lot of cantina tokens and with those to those tokens I'd recommend you unlock the fifth Jawa Dathcha because you need five five-star Jawas to do the crit damage mod challenge and you definitely want the crit damage mod challenge because they crit damage mods you basically want a set on every attacker that's in a raid so you really need to get that set unlocked um, so that's your cantina now with your arena tokens I mentioned that any Sith team needs a strong Savage Opress and if I remember correctly, Savage is available in the arena shop. So I would farm his tokens until he's seven star. You know, get him up as strong as you can. And that's where you I would focus your arena tokens on. Now the Guild War tokens, I already kind of mentioned where you want them. And you're gonna use your arena or guild war tokens to farm up Captain Phasma to 7 stars. She is, since day one, been relevant, um, whether it's in Arena or the Raids. She has probably been, from the very beginning of the game, one of the most useful characters to have. So it can't hurt to get her starred up and leveled up. Um, and to make it through Guild War, um, the very first node, use your Jedi and get that Jedi, get them their turn meter started. Don't necessarily use their specials, just use your basics to clear the first node. And then I would switch to your Sith, actually, and use your Sith under a Darth Nihilus lead. Um, you'd probably use Darth Nihilus, Emperor Palpatine, Sith Assassin, Count Dooku, and Darth Sidious. Alternatively, you could use Darth Vader instead of Count Dooku, but with Darth Nihilus' health steal, you could take your Sith very far into the, or into the Guild War and just use your Jedi team <coughs> to take out a Darth Vader Zeta team or anybody else that you just can't quite get with those Sith. Um, 
and as you level up and star your Savage Opress, transition him into that team, because he's just too strong not to have in an arena team that's centered around Sith, because he is that good with his Zeta. And uh, an honorable mention and a shout out to a team that's near and dear to my heart, you've got some great clone action going, though I must admit, with no crit damage mods, it'll be hard to make too much use of them, and Cody does not have a Zeta on him yet, so maybe that's something to think about in the future, uh, but without crit damage mods, they are going to be severely hampered in the damage that they could do. Um, and once you kind of get your Jedi, your Sith, maybe your clones, or the, the characters I recommended up, um, you're going to want to work on, like I said, getting your first order up to speed to do, the, to do that mod challenge. Get your Jawas, uh, again, level 80, 85, with maxed abilities about gear 8 to do that challenge. And then once all that's good to go, I would say really start focusing a lot of your efforts on your resistance team because you are at a great place where the teams that you want you have pretty much ready to go as far as stars and gear you just need a little bit here and there to get them up so you can really start focusing on the resistance because they are a strong team they have a lot of versatility to them um, they will really boost your raid damage and moving forward as uh, one of our chaos members mentioned in slack um, they're a great team to have moving forward because in December when the next movie comes out there probably will be a few resistance characters so I hope that gives you the direction you're looking for or the validation in your current arena team and a little uh, guidance on your mod game. But Prof. Rook Frank, it looks like you've got some great work going on. Keep the focus that you have, and there will be no stopping you in building these super teams that you want to have. As far as ships go, you got some really good stuff here. Um. And in fact, a super strong opening team in Rex's arc, uh, Biggs Dark Lighter, well you can do Biggs in Barn Starfighter, TIE Advanced, Slave 1, and you could probably throw in Rex's uh, ship as the 5th, because he does target lock unbuffed enemies. And maybe bring in the Scimitar, Jedi Consort, Starfighter, and Ahsoka Tano as your reinforcements. And that will probably work best for you under uh, an Executrix lead. Um, your TIE Fighter, the Imperial TIE Fighter, maybe you could keep leveling him up to replace Ahsoka Tano. And put him in your starting lineup for Rex. So that... You have Biggs, Umbar, and TIE Advanced, Slave 1, and TIE Fighter as your starting lineup, with Scimitar, Jedi Consort, Starfighter, and Rex's Arc 170 as your backups, and you have a really, really good uh, starting lineup there, and all those pilots are already geared, so psh, you're good to go. You don't need any help there. So, yeah, keep it up. Keep up the good work. Keep with the focus, which a lot of character, a lot of people struggle with myself included and you're going to keep rising up the ranks no problem so for now this is Hikaratos saying goodbye and good luck everybody